Hello and welcome to ATP Report. We have Phil Haney back today, a good friend of American Truth Project. You may remember that Phil is a founding member of Homeland Security going back to the founding of that organization in uh, 2001 after the World Trade Center attack. And he spent uh, a considerable amount of time protecting the United States from terror from abroad and homegrown. This guy is an expert on Muslim terrorists. And Phil, we are so glad to have you back on ATP Report today. Thank you, friend. I'm glad to be here, too. Yeah, we're honored. We're honored that you're part of the team. The information you bring is relentlessly uh extraordinary let's just dive into it today we're going to be talking about care the council on american islamic relations uh in previous episodes you've given us the horrible news that they seem to be um infiltrating all levels of government within the united states let's start it off with this phil a quick short explanation of what is care and why should we be worried CARE is an acronym for the Council on American Islamic Relations. It's probably the best known Muslim organization in the country, but unfortunately it's also connected, irrefutably proven to be connected to the Muslim Brotherhood. Now the Muslim Brotherhood has been already designated in several countries around the world, including Middle Eastern countries, and they should know as a terrorist organization, as a front group, up to and including Hamas, which we know is a designated terrorist group itself. Now, the Muslim Brotherhood is founded in 1928 as an Islamic revival organization, and its goal is to implement a caliphate, a Sharia-based form of government around the whole world. They're not shy about saying so, and we're not immune to it, which brings us to where we are today. We've, I've been continuing to track this group and other ones that are part of the Muslim Brotherhood. And I have to say with, with great distress that, if anything, they're more woven into the fabric of different branches of our government today, 2019, October, than even when they were when I was still active duty within DHS. And yeah, that does seem like a bold statement. It seems like it ought to be impossible. But I think that's what we're going to go over today. So I get it. And let's talk specifics. So why in the world, Phil, would the FBI, the premier law enforcement agency in the world, and certainly our number one national police force, whose mission it is, is to protect us internally within the boundaries of the United States. What the heck is the FBI doing in bed with care? Well, first of all, let's make sure to make the point that they are. This isn't something that has been going that started years ago and was taken care of. I'm talking just in the last week or two. Care and other Muslim Brotherhood front groups have been meeting by invitation from the Department of Homeland Security and or branches within the U.S. State Department to help implement and develop policy here in the United States. And before I forget it, I should mention that the new focus of the new Department of Homeland Security has just released in their new 2019 strategic document, about 20 to 40 pages, is a focus on white supremacy. Not so much Islamic terrorism, now a new shift into a new arena, white supremacy. And that brings us to the relationship with CARE. They have now asked groups like CARE and the Muslim Public Affairs Council and the U.S. Council of Muslim Organizations, all acronyms, part of the Muslim Brotherhood, to come and help them implement this new policy of focus on white supremacy. What you just said sounds so stupid by the government. I, I have no other word other than stupid. If indeed white supremacy 
movements were a real threat to the U.S. government and our citizenry within our borders, why would you bring in an organization whose mission it is to infiltrate and advocate for Muslim rights, uh, Muslim Sharia, um, Muslim protections? What the heck in the world do they have to do with white supremacy? Or is it simply, uh, hey, look over there, don't look at us? Well, I guess as simple as I can put it, the threat to the Muslim community has now been defined as a threat that comes from white supremacists. We've all heard the term a thousand times Islamophobia, right? Of course. Well, those who are the most Islamic phobia, Islamophobic are going to be the white supremacists. And of course that translates by a wink and a nod right up into the administration of President Trump, doesn't it? And that is part of the crazy part about it, is that on one hand, we have an administration who is seeking to protect uh, our rights and our, our national security, and yet we have at the same time groups that have been fighting against us for, for decades now that have now been brought into the same administration. And why it's so hard for me to um, talk about this even is this is what I did when I was active duty in the Department of Homeland Security and these are exactly the same groups that I was tracking then almost 20 years ago now who not only have not been designated or at least marginalized but no just the opposite they have now been brought back into positions of prestige of influence and access to the highest levels of the federal government in a deeper way than they ever were, or at least, yeah, deeper than they ever were, even during the Obama administration. Well, we're going to leave it there for this episode. We're going to pick up in episode two why that is the case. Why is Congress kissing the tushes of these absolutely connected radical front groups for terrorists and maybe we can get to the bottom of it for now thanks for joining us on atp report don't forget you can text 88202 on your cell phone send the word truth to 88202 you'll be signed up so you never miss an episode it's always free or go to our website you can find it on the web by just typing in findberry.com sign up it's always free You'll never miss an episode. Phil, thanks for joining us today, and thank you for tuning in to ATP Report. I am Barry Newsbaum.